Alright, this is going to be another Ohio Sports Update video, starting with some positive and uplifting news regarding the Peyton Hillis story. Earlier on this year, Peyton Hillis uh, saved his niece and his son from drowning in a rip current after they went to Pensacola, Florida. And while the story definitely did make headlines and make waves at the time, I do th think that it got a very well-deserved rejuvenation from his appearance on Good Morning America, recounting those events. He went on to say that it was a miracle that nobody died, including himself, as after he got back to shore, making sure that both his son and his niece were safe, he experienced lung and kidney failure before going unconscious, and he was reportedly out of consciousness in the hospital for 10 days before he finally came to while still in critical condition. However, he was able to be nursed back to health, thankfully, and he was able to honestly get back to being in enough of a healthy state to make his appearance on Good Morning America. Now, he has taken a very humble approach to this when asked with the, the line of questioning, you know, people are saying you're a hero, how do you respond? He came up with, and I am slightly paraphrasing here, this isn't the exact quote, but he came up with basically saying that he doesn't see himself as a hero, just a dad who would do what, what he would do for any kid, whether they were his family or not. Uh, so I think it's fantastic that this is getting the recognition that it deserves. This this appearance was a few days ago, so it's, this isn't exactly breaking news, but I did want to cover it, did want to kind of give this story that the, the flowers it deserves, give Peyton Hillis uh, all the credit in the world. And, and despite his humbleness, I, I will definitely call him a hero here. And, you know, he was already known as a legend on the field for his time in Cleveland and elsewhere throughout the NHL. Uh, but now he's going to be remembered as a legend and, again, a hero off of it nationwide. And honestly, I, I do feel like that is more of, a, of an important hallmark than just being remembered as a guy who carried a football very well. Not that saying that's bad, but just saying that, you know, what he's going to be remembered for, for saving his niece and his son from, from drowning, saving their lives, essentially, that's going to have a lot bigger impact. Speaking of good news, in a bit more of a superficial sense as far as teams that I root for having good results, the Columbus Crew won their match in Chicago against the Fire last Saturday, final score of 2-1. to one. Uh, The two goals were from Cucho Hernandez and Lucas Zellerayan, so the usual suspects as far as Columbus Crew success goes. Uh, Cucho Hernandez's goal was off of a deflection, so maybe a bit of, of a fluky bounce, but you'll take them any way you can get them. And Lucas Zellerayan, late in stoppage time, it looked like the crew were going to blow another lead late, have two points go down the drain, but Zellerayan found the net on a shot from midfield, where the keeper was pretty much out of position. It wasn't great on his part, but Zellerayan was able to get it from the middle of the pitch there. Uh, the crew have been having a nice run ever since I said they were going through a pretty bad stretch. They've been playing very well as of late. I think it's a three-match winning streak for them. They are still only sixth in the MLS East, so there's plenty of room for them to climb up the table. Uh, th their good stretch has been against mostly some pretty low-tier competition, I must admit. So while it is encouraging that they're getting these wins, who knows what, what, the, what, what will be in store from the crew once they start playing a bit better competition, once they have a, a little more of a tougher schedule to deal with. They play tomorrow afternoon against New York City FC, who is also pretty far down on the MLS table. And, but it is on the road, and, and road games are tough to win in MLS, but you would hope that the crew are able to keep their positive momentum going and hard pivoting into the MLB for sports we got the Reds and the Guardians both of these teams are still under 500 but they are still you know in the race for their crappy divisions both the AL and NL Central are have just been complete terrible this year it's it's just bad uh Ellie De La Cruz has been electric for the Cincinnati Reds ever since he's been called up there was certainly a lot of hype around him when he got to the majors and he has lived up to them up to this point the Reds have also won five in a row eight of their last 10 and they've taken their last three series against the Dodgers, Cardinals, and Royals. I mean, obviously the Cardinals and Royals not having the best season, but you did get the, the series win over the Dodgers in there. The Guardians, they don't have that same momentum, but we saw how last season went for the Guardians where they would have a hot streak and a not hot streak, and their, their record for most of the season wasn't all that great, but they stuck around in that division, and they went on a pretty good run late to the season, and that got them into the playoffs last season. We'll see if it happens again this year. 
Closing off the video with some minor Columbus Blue Jackets news. Maybe not so minor as they hire Nicholas Backstrom, not the current player, but the former goaltender as their current goaltender coach. He's been their European goalie scout and development guy since, I believe, 2019. He has a tough task in front of him as his job will be to try to get Elvis Merzlikens back onto, onto his form, back on his game, or at the very least have him be at least average, where the last couple seasons it's... It's been really rough for Elvis Merzlikens. You would think that hopefully with a revamped defensive core, maybe that will help a little bit. But it does seem like Elvis is currently in his head. Maybe his confidence has been shaken the last couple of years. And this goaltending coach, he has to get, you know, Nicholas Bastrom here. He has to get Elvis back into the game, not just, you know, with the physical positioning stuff, but also in his head as well. He also has the task of, you know, making sure Daniil Tarasov's development keeps on track. That is also going to be a task for him. And the Blue Jackets have also signed Josh Dunn to a one-year two-way deal. This is an AHL depth piece. He does play center, but honestly, he's only seen NHL ice if injuries play a factor. And I do think that's where he is on the roster right now. That's why it's a two-way deal. I don't anticipate him seeing uh, much consistent NHL ice time again, unless there are a, a ton of injuries this year, just like there was last season. So it's definitely possible. I'm not against this signing because I think it is mostly a harmless depth piece signing. He, you know, his time in the NHL, he doesn't look completely, he doesn't, he hasn't looked bad. He hasn't looked good. He, he has had some NHL games where he doesn't look uh, t too terrible, but again, just a minor depth piece signing for the Blue Jackets. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching it this far if you made it this far into it. I will see you at the next video. Leave a like and a subscribe if you like this video and you'd like to see more like it. I'll see you at the next one.